Welcome <laughs> to our first of a series, uh, uh, kind of, these are not webinars, uh, by the way, it's kind of uh, uh, informal, informal yeah, presentation. We want to uh, present what the resources that we have. We want to support teachers. Uh, we also uh, want to have conversation because we want to know uh, what the teachers need uh, and CP needs and uh, need to uh, be successful in teaching in this uh, particular uh, year and the people are joining so do you see it uh, Nadia okay so I'm taking care of that okay good so just a reminder uh, we will do uh, we will present but you, you will have a chance also to uh, participate and ask your questions so when we present, if it's possible to turn off your microphone so we don't hear uh, background noise and you can use the chat or you can raise your hand if you want to, uh, if you have a question. So uh, let's start. Uh, you maybe Nadia, you can copy and paste the link to the presentation in the chat box. So uh, today we will present our resources uh, that uh, the, the resources that we developed for uh, distance teaching. So you're going to have a kind of an overview of what we did and where to find those resources. If I OK, there you go. So Marcel, do you want to present uh, the intentions? Absolutely. So hi, everybody. My name is uh, Marcel Tremblay. And uh, I think we'll introduce ourselves uh, in just a second uh, more formally, but uh, I just wanted to let you know about uh, the intentions that we have for these uh, meetings overall and what you could get uh, out of them. So we want to provide support for teachers and CPs in the distance teaching context. And we will be successful if you know how to assess and prioritize your needs. Um, and that you can find and use the available resources because it's one thing for us to tell you uh, what's available, but if, if you can't find it, uh, there's no point, right? Um, and also you'll be successful if you can use the technology to adapt, modify, and redefine lessons to suit your distance teaching needs. Today, we're going to start by assessing your needs and showing you how to find and use our distance teaching resources, all right? But just before we start, I like we mentioned, uh, a lot of you are finishing the day and a lot of you are still joining in. I hope everyone is uh, feeling relaxed and, and welcome. Like uh, Sandra said, this is really informal. We want you to feel comfortable and in a safe space when you, you come here with us. We're really there for you and we want you to feel welcome and we hope this is going to bring you what you need. So, so Marte presented the, presented the intentions. Of course, you understand that today we won't show you how to adapt, modify, redefine your lessons. So it's our uh, long term goal. So by the end of the year, we want you to be able to uh, be a bit more at ease and comfortable. But today we're going to start with something, you know, a bit si simpler. So what exists, what, what, the, the, what is out there, OK? So the events. So I think you saw this post on our Facebook page or maybe in Quebec ESL teacher. Maybe you received the invitation uh, from your CP. So here you have uh, the events uh, of December. We might have another one on December 14th. So uh, just, uh, you know, uh, ch check it out. Uh, so you can see all the events on our uh, Facebook page. So you have a link here on the, the, of our uh, Facebook page if you are on Facebook and you want to like our page. But you can also go, there's a link to our website in the new uh, the new um, i'm gonna open it <laughs> so here in the news section everything everything that we develop or is new on the website will be posted there okay so if ever you want to have uh, to see what's new out there you go uh, on at that place on our website also um is there something else that I wanted to? Okay, yes, we're gonna in December. 
we will also give you uh, another calendar for January. There you go. So who are we? <laughs> we are the RICI. <laughs> so we are uh, pedagogical consultants from the Service National du RICI Domaine des Langues. Um, so I am Sandra Lane and uh, we are here. I'm here today with my colleagues. So Martin uh, presented himself and maybe Nadia, you can say hi. <laughs> Hello. Hi, everyone. <laughs> And we have the pleasure today to uh, present our new colleague, so Diane Elizabeth Stankovich. Uh, so <laughs> maybe you could say hi, Diane. Hi. Hi, Pam. <laughs> Yay. So Diane uh, joined our team uh, for uh, you know three days a week uh, uh, until the end of June, and. Her mandate is really working, will be to work with uh, teachers that have to teach online, you know, how to go from the classroom to online teaching. So she will be there to support you. So just uh, keep in mind that we will offer other uh, uh, things to help you out throughout the year. OK, quickly, because after we want to hear you, if you don't know what the RCE is, it's a network of resource people uh, uh, situated across the province. You have the RIS National, so we are the RIS National, and there are 14 services, so they are uh, situated across the province. And we work, uh, we work in the development of the competencies of teachers and students, um, in specifically for ESL, but you have other consultants for math, uh, for science, for French, and so on. Uh, you have the uh, Récit Régional, they work with the adult sector, and the Récit Local, uh, they, are so, they are also called uh, techno-pédagogue, uh, 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 ICT consultants in your school board, and the school service centers, and they specifically work for the integration of technologies and in, in, in your different classes, they support you in your school board. We cover the entire province. Now, quickly, our mandates, produce, share, promote useful resources to integrate technologies and digital resources, specifically for ESL. We support consultants, teachers, and other professionals uh, uh, across the province. And we offer a variety of training sessions. So, this year is online, <laughs> but we do also face-to-face -face workshops and uh, co-development groups uh, and so on. So a quick overview of our mandates. So Nadia, uh, I'm going to let so, you. As it was explained, uh, to, uh, the sessions that we're going to be doing every week will be on different topics and uh, will be there to support you and your needs. Uh, so basically, the we're doing this today. We're going to ask what you would need to have in terms of resources or information. And what uh, we'll ask you to do is if you click on the hand that's right there, uh, it will bring you to another document. And in that document, it's a, we're, uh, it's a uh, Google Doc. So everybody can participate in adding uh, what their needs are. And of course, we have resources, we have tools to support you. So this by you writing down your needs, it will help us figure out what we need to guide you to towards. <laughs> because we have so many resources. So we we uh, we need to, to to know what you need in order to guide you. So uh, so I'll we'll give you a few minutes to take some time to write down um, uh, your needs in terms of organization, planning, student engagement or motiv motivation, online netiquette or comp competency development. Um, it, I see that here that the emoji doesn't work well, so I'm going to change it. But if what uh, what I would like you to do is if you feel that, you know, there's someone writing something right there. <laughs> so um, uh, I would like you to write maybe an X or something, maybe uh, next 
to uh, something that you really like, you know, like put a, a big X or something. So it, it let's say that it's also your need. It just shows us that this is something that we really need to address um, uh, to support you today because two or three or more people are really have that need. So uh, if, if it's, it's not clear, let me know. Uh, I will. I here I put click on the link. I put the link to the document per se in the here document um, needs. So I'm writing it there. I'm just going to uh, you know sometimes we have to give you silence so you can think about what you want to say. Uh, so I'll give you uh, three, four minutes to write down your needs and then according to what you, to what you write, we'll be uh, guiding you towards our resources. If there's anything that's not clear or you want us yep, to explain, just use know. the chat box or turn on your microphone. I think there's someone who has a question. Uh, Lucille? Yes, yes, I do. Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm Lucille. Um, I'm just wondering, I'm on my iPad. Can I click? How do, do you know how I can um, access uh, that? Yeah, I think you need to have a... Or do you have a, a Google account? Uh, yeah. Okay, so it's a, if you look on your iPad at the bottom right, mm -hmm. there should be a little pen. If you click on the document, you open. So you should be, when you click on that, it's because you want to edit the document. Okay, I don't see a little pen anywhere. If you oh, click on there, it's on the top. Mine is ah. on the top. Okay, well, I see it then. Thank you. Okay. So take your time. This is sort of the most important part. And if you feel you don't have enough time and you want to add stuff, of course, we'll have access to that document. Just a little reminder, those X's are for people who who just want to say, oh, yeah, me too. I think the same thing and I'd like to hear more about this. So it's just adding your voice or adding your vote to whatever someone else wrote. Uh, I see some people, they they put an X into the empty box, but we get it. We get what you mean. You, you want to hear more about competency development. You want to know more about student engagement and motivation as a whole. So that's that's fine, you know, but if you have specific needs within those categories, feel free to write them. And it's, it, you know, it's interesting for us also, if the resource is not yet developed, at least we know what you need and we can address it after. So maybe in January we could have a specific presentation on those needs, okay? So it's a start like we mentioned because some, some of you arrived late. So we mentioned that today it's kind of placing, you know, knowing where to get what exists already. Uh, and then we're going to build on. So each week we're going to add on to what was presented uh, and we will address your needs, okay?
Can I continue? Hi, it's me again. Can I continue my um, search for the <laughs> filling out the form on the iPad? Yes. It didn't work. So well, can I just say what I what I need? Yes, or you can write it in the, you can say yes, yes. Because yeah. it's a little complicated with the keyboard, even just to write in the chat, it's long. And so okay. I, I, actually, what I'm looking for is um, I want to know if how it's possible to have students work in groups. Can you do that? Like have everybody, I, I think it, you can, but I've never, I don't know how that is. So yeah, conversationally, or like if you had them sort of in little groups somehow and you could go, I've heard that you can do that. I don't know how. So <laughs> that's called that's breakout rooms. Yeah. yeah. Are you working with uh, um, Teams or with Google or with uh, which platform do you use? Teams. 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 Okay. Good. Okay, that's what I would need. I'll Thank put you. it in organization for you. Okay. Thank you. You know what? I think we could start. And if you have ideas throughout the presentation, add on to the chart. Maybe we're going to talk about something and then you're going to say, oh, it make me, makes me think about that and so on. So and maybe you just need to see what's out there just to have an idea. So um, the way that we're going to do it is we will read your need and try to answer by pointing out where you can find the information. And if you we don't have it, well, we are going to keep it and uh, pr uh, try to uh, present resources for you. OK. So let's go. Um, OK, first question. We're going to start with the first column organization, how to have all the documents ready to go. So what I understand with that question is where can how can I organize so everything is in one place? OK, so this is what I'm hearing. So um, what I will do before <laughs> we're, I'm going to switch. Yeah, I need to present in our uh, document, main document. We have prepared. We have our distance teaching resource document. So this we everything that we created, we created a, a, an interactive presentation with it. OK, so if you click on this image and Nadia can add the link in the chat box. OK. So everything that we have is there. OK, so you don't have to see. OK, this is on that website. This is there. This is there. So everything that we present will be added that we develop will be added in this presentation. OK, so this is what we have. Uh, you can click on the link that is in the chat box and start exploring uh, at the same time. So the first question, um, I don't know, uh, Martin, do you want to take that one? Yes, I was just muting a microphone. Okay. So the first question being with uh, which one? Sorry, Sandra. The, you, you, are you talking about the first point with the yes. TEDx or the, uh, the all the, the documents, documents ready to go? <laughs> I just love it when you put me on the spot like that. <laughs> I thought I I thought you were uh, going to to mention that uh, because it's it's from paper to digital. Yes, of course. I'm sorry. It's Nadia. Nadia, I'm sorry. Uh, we're we're trying. It's a new. It's a, it's a, it's kind of a conversation uh, we were having. So Nadia, <laughs> maybe you can talk about it. I I'm sorry, Martin. No, no, <laughs> no. That, that, that's fine. I was it. like, is is this like a trick <laughs> question? But uh, yes, yes, it, yes. I know it, this is more up your alley. So yeah. Okay, Nadia. <laughs> yeah. So if you oh okay. So basically to organize your documents, what was created with a group of teachers and CPs from uh, the Grande Seigneurie was a document called from pa going from paper to digital. And it was at the, you know, the original idea was to support Charlie teachers, but we have updated it with the reality of today. And of course, before trolley teachers were, were at the elementary level, now they're also at the secondary level. So we adapted our documents uh, to the new reality of distance teaching as well as um, 
uh, secondary. And what you can find is a guide to help you organize your online documents. Of course, um, we're talking to people all over the province. Everybody, you know, they you all have different realities, so different platforms, different uh, uh, systems and uh, and tools that you use in your school service school service centers. But uh, what we did is we put all the possibilities, everything that could be used. So in the first one, for example, this is a guide with um, a lot of information on how to of course, organize your trolley, but organize your platform. Okay, uh, the next one is uh, here. This is a routines document and there's one for elementary and one for secondary. Of course, routines, when you show a document with routines to your students, it helps organize and structure your lessons and structure the information that you share with your students. So these documents were prepared both for elementary and uh, this one is new, it's for secondary. Uh, and we did that in collaboration with people on the field. So we got uh, a new, you know, we, 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 that's it. We listened to the needs. <laughs> so, so we have that, those routine documents for both levels, elementary and secondary, as well as if you want, we also put, because we gave that workshop a few times, this presentation document will give you even more information, you know, as to how to organize everything. So the last time that it was presented was at the Speak Convention, but it was, uh, so if, and if you, you know, if you go browse through them, uh, you'll get a lot of information on how to organize your things. Yeah, and I, I might add that uh, everything that we uh, create is in a Creative Commons license. So you can create, make your own copy and adapt everything that we're presenting right now. So the routine document that you just saw, you can create your copy and create your routine um, for your students, for your class, according to your students, okay? And according to your needs. And you share it with all your colleagues and uh, yeah, it's all for you. Sandra, there's a question from yes, uh, there's Jennifer. there's a question, but be, before we answer that question, just so that everyone is on the same page and that nobody says, oh my, this is going super fast. Look at what's going on on the screen right now. What we're doing is that for every need that you've mentioned, we are going back to that document and we're adding the direct link to the resource. So whoever wrote the question, how to have all the, uh, or the, the, the request to have all of the documents ready to go, now it's, it's, uh, it's linked directly to that resource that Nadia just showed that maybe it went a bit fast, but we understand that we want to cover everything. Now you just click on it and you'll be able to access that resource. So we have a question from Jennifer. Jennifer, you want to turn on your microphone? Yes, I have a question. Since I am a student teacher and uh, I don't really have uh, like the CS, how can I have those uh, documents? Like I don't have an access for those. Would it be possible for me to have them? Everyone has access to those documents, so you just need to click on the links and uh, and uh, and create your own copy. So you you just need to have an account. Uh, I think it's it's created in Google, and I think Nadia, did you add the the version, the PowerPoint version in the, these ones? Yes, in the presentation, you can also find it. But it's true that I could add the PowerPoint also on the website. Oh, yeah. that would be great! Thank you so much. But in the pres, if you open up the presentation, uh, there's a page where you can the PowerPoint uh, versions were also uh, included. All right, thanks. And if you can't find it, let us know. Good. So um, second question, I have a lot of LES, but not online ready. <laughs> That's a question that comes up often. So we need to shorten the LES, of course, because online long LES is might, you know, it's not necessarily the best context to do so. Um, what I can answer uh, for now uh, is that we will probably in January show you how you can adapt your LES to online teaching. 
but we will also provide some examples of activities that can be done online. OK, so we will we are actually building kind of a website where we, you will find all all those those LESs that you can use for online teaching. So it will probably in January you will have access to uh, these resources. OK, so what I will do is I will add a comment. So January. OK, <laughs> is that OK for that? Oh, big question. How to avoid cheating? OK, suggestion. If you use Teams, you can tell your students to keep their cameras open until the exam is finished. So you can also ask to your students to share their screen before the exam to be sure they are not using other documents or ask them to show what they have in our desk. Okay, so this so is- So Sandra, I can take uh, that one. Yes, yes. Right, because that's actually something that was going on in, in the chat. There was a question and someone mentioned, oh, can I just write a comment? And I said, sure, we, we love to hear what you guys already uh, are doing in your classes. Um, so about cheating, of course, we know that is, that's one hot topic, cheating and evaluation. So this is also something that we are working on uh, with CPs and the ministry, and uh, we will come back to you uh, pretty much, I guess, after uh, Christmas, right? Uh, where we'll have more tips and tricks, but definitely this is uh, one biggie that we're going to, to address. So it's coming up, so follow us because there will be lots of things to discuss and not just tricks as to how to avoid uh, cheating per se, but how to maybe repurpose what we're doing so that there's no cheating necessary. It's it's kind it's not an easy question to answer quickly like that, but like Ma uh, Martin mentioned, there will be something that we're going to think about kind of strategies and ways to avoid it. But of course, uh, you know, uh, Cheating, uh, cheating existed uh, before, uh, so it's kind of uh, <laughs> we need to rethink the way that we do things. I think when we teach online, so that's basically the the the, the answer that I can we can give you for now. But of course, uh, yes, uh, looking forward to January, of course. So more to come for that. Okay, but it's interesting to know that. Everything that we thought on developing for you will be useful. OK. Um, other question, how to make smaller groups and teams for group activities? So we have something for that. Um, Martin or Nadia, do you want to address this one? Well, C1 Online is a webinar that we um, we did, uh, in, you know, you have to remember that this pandemic and ha happened in phases, right? There were needs at, a, at the beginning, which was to support parents and then support teachers who had to teach online. And so those were all created at specific points in the pandemic and uh, they, but they are still very relevant. Right now, what is a, a, what we are uh, what's available is in C1 online. We created two webinars, one for elementary, one for secondary, with examples of activities uh, that you can do online. And of course, the best way to do these C1 activities is in smaller groups. So in order to show you how to organize these smaller groups, we've created two webinars, um, for one for Google Meet and one for Microsoft Teams. So it's the same webinar, but the part about the technical aspect of breakout rooms was different in the two presentations. And uh, of course, Google Meet is a certain way. The, the way I explain in this is a certain way, but and there's uh, there's Google breakout rooms also, but we don't talk about that there. Um, and it's th this way still works. OK, <laughs> so this way still works very well. Microsoft Teams uses channels. Some school boards have breakout rooms or another option. 
in the case of this webinar, we explained it in the channels because that was what was, uh, was available back then and it still works. OK, so if ever you have the other options of breakout rooms in your depending on your uh, your uh, platform, there's tutorials are about that online. Uh, you can ask your Reci Local, of course, if for technical support for that. But we have those available both for elementary and Martin did the one for secondary, of course. And yes, I remember that because I had to shoot them in my car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's cool. when we were all a uh, crisis teaching, you know, and um, so one of the things that you need to remember from today, we are posting a lot of our resources uh, as links. But also, when we say have access to resources, we're definitely also thinking about the different people that are there for you. Could be your Rissi Local or maybe technicians at your school, but also what's already available out there. Because for tools like Teams or, or Google, things are evolving very quickly because there's a lot of demand right now and a lot of requests. So the biggest requests, they get treated uh, way more quickly than in the past. So something like breakout rooms is a feature that's actually coming out as breakout rooms on Teams uh, in the very near future. So those are questions you can actually uh, check out. No, they're not available now, but they're coming. Uh, very, very shortly. I, I'm seeing the questions in the, the chat at the same time. So one of the ways that you can do this, uh, you can also like Google these questions. OK, so how to create breakout rooms on Teams or when are breakout rooms coming out on Teams? And you get to have like sometimes you'll have the answer straight from the horse's mouth. So directly from Microsoft or from Google. And I might add, uh, Anita just asked, are the breakout rooms available on Teams right now? Well, that's a big question. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Well, is that uh, technology evolves, like Martin said. But the thing is, we don't know when it happens to come in our area, kind of. So because they br bring them in different places. And so we never know exactly when it, they will arrive. And uh, if your school service center will, uh, you know, put it in your system or not, you know, this is something that is more related to how your IT department organizes your platform. And because I see Anita's name here, don't forget that your CP disciplinaire, anglais langue seconde, ESL uh, CPs are fantastic and uh, contact them. They have so much re so many resources also available and uh, they they also know uh, uh, where to find resources as well so uh, there's people around you and there's google with who is my best friend thank you but we can also if we see that there's a big change maybe we could provide maybe in our section of the webinar maybe add some tutorials to help you out but of course like Nadia mentioned you have a support in your school board from your PC so they might offer also uh, a specific uh, support because sometimes for us it's hard to know how it's organized in each school service center so one school service center might offer something and the other one they don't offer it or they don't have the same setting. So, so we do it, uh, you know, we provide resources gen in general and after for the specifics, I think the, 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 the reflex would be to contact your uh, support uh, RIC, your uh, local RIC in your, your uh, centre de service scolaire. Um, if I look at the other, I'm seeing there's a lot of questions and um, so- We're that, only down one column. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I see the time, so I want to make it. Would you like me to do to go over them quickly? Yes. Uh, the, the the remaining ones from from that column because we we did talk about evaluation, so I'm looking at the other one evaluation while teaching online. So we talked about that when we covered cheating, so that's coming for sure. The other one, I'm in isolation and I need to teach one class online, but we started with the booklet. I guess you mean the the student booklet. Uh, it's my first online course and how do I collect the work they do at home if they don't have the booklet? Um, so maybe like if they don't have this 
student book version, the online version of the student book. Maybe that's what you're referring to. So these are specific aspects that you can check with your 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 local people, because let's say, for example, you're talking about your the, the online version of your student book or booklet. Uh, this you would need to check with the publisher if it's available or even your principal to see if the, the school has the, the online version, for example. But if you're talking about organizing your classroom to receive assignments from your students, that's a whole different ballgame. So we're dealing with uh, Google Classroom or with um, with teams, how to get assignments and so on. Other schools are using OneNote and, and so on. And that too, the, the best people would probably be around you to, to tell you what's already uh, being used. Okay. Yeah. So that's, I, I, oh, oh, and the flipped classroom. Sorry about the, the flipped classroom. When we talk about flipping the classroom, we usually mean that students do things outside the classroom online and then they come back to the classroom and and they do uh, practical work so it's like they're learning outside and they're practicing in front of the teacher so that way it's a different uh, class uh, setup uh, what we like to refer to is hybrid teaching so it's like you're teaching in your classroom environment and for whatever reason you need to go home things are also available inside the classroom and outside the classroom and that definitely we have that so uh, yeah, on, that's on the what board I want to mention i'm going to show Go the, the hybrid so maybe you can talk about it sure <laughs> so we we do have that so we we love to refer to hybrid because flip has its own limitations or disadvantages but hybrid it's like uh, being ready for for anything you're in your classroom you have your your things you're, you're at home, you have your things. So this is a quick Genially presentation that is sort of uh, self-explanatory. If you click on it and you will see how you can use tools like Edpuzzle to have uh, videos, explanations that, that contain uh, questions. So instead of having just, maybe some of you are already used to making your own videos explaining things. Well, instead of having the students just passively listening to, to you in a video, you can already insert uh different questions within your explanations so we show you within that presentation how to use these tools at home and in class there's also how to create games using uh, genially and also how to create models for certain tasks using genially so that's one of the games that we have that's actually for sec5 uh, teachers um from our uh, distance uh <laughs> or formation at distance, so distance uh, teaching course that's also available. So if you didn't know, uh, there's a, a full SEC 5 course uh, being built uh, for formation at distance, so that too you could ask us for more uh, details. All right, and now time to hit the second column. So uh, I'm sorry, I have a daughter at home and she's talking to me uh, while we're presenting. So oh, uh, don't be sorry, <laughs> Sandra. It's hard at this her. time of the day, we love kids, we love <laughs> animals, we love anything that can happen. So the reason we, we knew that we had our kids around at this time of the day, but we wanted to do it at a time where we would get as many people as possible and huge shout out to all of you guys who are here this afternoon we know you have your day you also have your kids and 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 so on so huge shout out for for being there it is genially free there is a free version uh where you can uh, have access to a lot of the their templates so yes there's a free version just before i forget there's also like a support group of teachers on genially so genially educators or something like that where people swap uh, different genially presentations and games and so on so that too you can get to share and network with other teachers and that's the idea you're not alone okay so we're all in this together maybe not in the same boat in different boats but in the same storm definitely in the second column for planning and we have a new teacher and they only have uh, online periods of 30, 45 minutes, one hour, two hours. What are the main knowledge that I absolutely need to teach for SEC 1 and SEC 3? 
And your best bet is something that's been around before the pandemic, and it's the program. But I, I see what you mean by essential. And that's, so we have the program, yes. Yes, but, but I think there's something that the ministry did. Uh, am yes. I, am I, there are some CPs uh, in our presentation. Uh, if you have the link uh, for us, maybe you can <laughs> copy and paste it in the chat box. Uh, and I think that the ministry prepared, you know, highlighted what was essential in a document. They call them the napron. The napron, yes. So definitely there's that tool, but also uh, being able, well, of course, for SEC 1, it would be a bit more difficult to consult their, their teachers from last year. But in, in SEC 3, if you had access to that data, that could tell you, this is what the, the students uh, did, but this is what they didn't have time to do. That could help you build or have this idea of where they are and where to take them next. And that's that's essential. You cannot just pretend that nothing's going on and I'm just going to do my classes. It's always been, but you're a first year teacher, so that's great. So if you can have access to that data or uh, get it from the students uh, by checking out the, the, their prior knowledge. All right, so, so I don't know if uh, someone could add uh, the, the link. I, I see that Diane said that it was sent. So uh, I don't know if you have it. Uh, um, OK, I will. Thank OK, you, good. Thank you, Lisa. So it will be sent. Uh, what a wonderful community. Yeah? Everyone got resources. And even if you have things to share, you can also share them. OK, so I'm. It, we see uh, we could spend a couple of hours together huh? we're going fast now <laughs> so um, another question is there are always lots of suggestions for activities and uh, but not much guidance on how to evaluate uh, like we mentioned this is something that we will address eventually probably in january so same thing uh, about evaluation Another interesting question, can I use any YouTube video in class in it? That one is mine, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so <laughs> if what I understand, my understanding, okay, is that Edpuzzle just takes a link, you know, it's, they don't take the video, they, they don't import the video in their environment, okay? so. You are. You can use that puzzle with your students uh, using videos from YouTube. Okay, but what I understand is that if you share your screen to students and they watch, we watch the video together. It's something that it's Could not. Some there are some restrictions, okay? But you can you can send a link to your Red Puzzle, and students can do that do the Red Puzzle individually, answer the questions. It's a question of uh, viewer versus YouTube right. rights, okay? So it's it's. I, I hope my explanation is clear. After that, you know, it's kind of the your um how you uh, how you use it okay so that's that's what i, I think i'm gonna finish here <laughs> for that uh, that uh, answer yeah uh, is it clear maybe tell me in in the uh well, in the there's one thing you you forgot to add sandra i'm sorry but um the the thing i think that your students need to see about ethics and and, and copyrights is that for example, if you're going to use a, a video on YouTube, but that you clearly know, uh, let's say it's a clip from Disney, but the author is Shubidoo 36, then you know that this person probably doesn't have the rights to, to have made that video. So it's always good to go to the source, the real author, the original author of that video. And that person or the author could be on YouTube. And it's just a matter of uh, giving back to Caesar uh, you know, uh, the, so giving the the, the proper uh, uh, attribution to the work and the, the person who did that work. So that I think would be like number one before you even start showing anything is to go to the original source. Okay, so 
so many great resources, but not enough time to plan. Of course, we hear you. <laughs> and it's all we have our limits. <laughs> figure out which one to choose. OK, <clears throat> I think we already addressed this one. So what we said is that we uh, will start like a kind of a platform where we will filter uh, a variety of activities that can be done in one period or two or three periods. For now, we have a couple of them. Um, they are uh, called uh, the, it's our challenge. Um, we've adapted in, uh, in sequences. So if we go on our website, looks like improvis improvisation, but uh, we wanted to do that way so we can have that discussion. So at the elementary level, I will give you the direct link, okay? It's called three to one action. So this is an activity that you can do in a couple of periods. I will add it right here. And three, two, one action. And the other one, Nadia, is, uh, do we have another one? Uh, it's for secondary. Secondary. So this is primary. Martin, maybe you could add your uh, resource uh, also. Sure, I'll just uh, do it right after because I'm using uh, two devices. And the other one is for a book review. So uh, it's called Review It. So there you have two activities that you can use. And Martin will add another one for high school, also for secondary uh, students, OK? So we will add them there, but eventually we will have more, OK? So now students' motivation, engagement, and so on. Um, of course, uh, Martin presented, um, if we go back to this presentation, hybrid fun. So there are ways to engage students. And there are some strategies also. So you see here in our uh, distance teaching strategy, I, uh, strategies, I don't know if you attended our webinar that we did when the pandemic started, you know, in, uh, May. I, was in we did this in May. OK, so it's a webinar on different uh, winning strategies and we talk about engaging students so you can watch this webinar and you have also access to the presentation and you will have a variety of ways to engage students. We are working on, uh, there's a lot of, uh, on our plate right now, uh, we are working on, on a, a document, uh, a presentation on strategies to um, engage students, to motivate them and also to feel um connected in a classroom you know because when they are online they often feel uh, alone so we want to work on that specific topic and uh, so we're we started the uh, presentation where we're going to give you a variety of strategies okay but uh, you know the 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 being active uh, sometimes it's uh, it can be simply to um ask them uh, questions and use the chat in different ways. Uh, engage them is creating small groups to work on specific things. Um, it could be to have uh, activities where they need to interact. Uh, you could add some surveys uh, where they need to answer questions. Uh, it could be to share, you know, a whiteboard and have them participate. It can be simply to have a, a collaborative uh, document like we're doing right now. And, you know, having them, you know, instead of uh, listening, have something to do, take notes, participate, answer in the chat, raise your hand, uh, send an emoji on, in the chat box. So always think of, think of about, uh, you know, maybe uh, active active so at 10 minutes or five minutes something ask a question or do something so always have that in mind and because sandra you teach, always being online uh, you know teaching online this this what sandra is explaining is a lot of different ways but in the first times that you actually use those ways you may have to pre plan them you know think oh how do i engage my students how do i 
but once you've done it a few times with your students you'll you'll you know you'll understand oh this is a good moment to do this or so it'll become a bit more automatic everything you do online with technology is with practice you become more comfortable and it, it, things become more natural your other ideas you know thinking outside the box will come easier and one thing that I could uh, add, uh, Sandra, is, you know, in the resources that we have, remember that we have the, uh, the uh, okay, I have a, I'm at a blank here, the TELUC online course, which has a lot of those tools. So this uh, TELUC online course actually is something that we developed. And uh, so it has a lot of different informations. And the, you know, for example, uh, if we go further down, we further down, we see on the left side how to organize your classroom, how to teach the ESL program online, how to engage, uh, plan engaging content to for online teaching. So these are the big ideas. The, of this module and so if you go you browse through and you do this uh, online course for free right uh, you can get a lot of the good strategies uh, uh, and we did that in June so uh, we had a, sh a short amount of time but we uh, we created this uh, for you <laughs> and well, to help support you and we're so there's a lot of information there also as well that's it uh, it's a great starting point uh, for, for anyone who's starting. And there was a question before about, hey, there's so many resources, so where do I start? And we get you, we hear you. And there's going to be some extra pet days. And you could also, where, where you could try to explore these different resources. But I think the way that we've built it, so that you start with one, two, three, four, five, you could go like this and start with one with the, what we've built for the the Teluk can also divide and conquer have like maybe a, a colleague that's going to to check out this part and and communicate what you found out um i'm looking at the time and the the good news is that there's only like one question that we really haven't addressed okay and it's because if i'm looking in the so the online etiquette so there was a there was one x and there's a I, I saw that the Récit uh, Développement de la Personne just came out with some resources today. Maybe we could add this, although they'll be in French. Um, but great, They're great, great. French. Like what to do when, when students are using a uh, uh, naughty language, let's just say online and so on. So uh, they, they, they just it just came out today, I believe. And uh, can I record in a channel so I can evaluate C1 for oral and C2? So we talk about the breakout rooms. So this is where you would get that uh, information. And, and the last one. It's possible, but I might add that uh, it's possible. But of course, you need permission. And sometimes students, they don't want to get filmed. So uh, so it's, it's kind of... Uh, it's something that you need to address in your school. So verify with your school if it's possible and so on. Uh, the re yeah, so and if, to answer the question in the chat, where do I get the recording of this webinar? It will be on our website. Um, and yeah, thank you, Nadia. So, uh, but yeah, I'm doing a, a multitasking. Eh? <laughs> and and there was one uh, final question because the last last one in the list was how to do C1 with peers efficiently. So that goes back to uh, doing C1 online. It's possible. So that's that's a resource we we already talked about, but we're going to link it. And so there's one left. It's various ways to use reinvestment C2 for all levels. <laughs> so for all levels. Uh, I, I would have liked to, I, I don't know if the person who wrote that question would like to, to give us some more details, like what they mean by being able to use it for all levels, because probably my interpretation of that uh, need could be different from, from yours. Uh, but the way I see it sometimes is I have a guiding question and I could use it from kindergarten all the way uh, till you're 97, you know, it's stuff that we think about and that can constantly be there. 
what inspires us if i'm nine years old my different uh, my my answer is going to be way different from when i'm 29 years old because of course uh, i will have learned more things and i can add to this question so i don't know if this is what you meant by that but that's one way that you can shape and build your c2 is around a guiding question that that can evolve uh, throughout time and that's it that that is still relevant throughout time and I read it differently. When I when I read that, I see maybe different ways I can develop C2 online. <clears throat> so maybe strategies that can be used either at the elementary or secondary level. And this is something uh, that will also uh, be developed. It's part of our uh, our plan. So you're here today. So it's. I, I understand for you, it's kind of, I want that. It's not there yet, but it's coming, okay? So uh, be patient. Uh, we have a lot of things. If you, so if you go back, if I, if I, I do a kind of a wrap up, um, if we go back, this, whoops, not this one. This is kind of the, this is the link where you will find almost everything that can be used for distance teaching either to find activities find resources find strategies find uh, documents that you can adapt to your needs ways you can engage students you can even self-train yourself you know if you want to know how to plan the integration of technologies on mm -hmm. our we have an online course on campus Rissi. Uh, we also have uh, websites where we uh, have uh, different uh, resources uh, or website, interesting websites for parents and teacher and, and you teachers. And you have ways to organize yourself. So from class to being home. So there are a variety of things that are available. So of course, an hour is too short to present everything that we have, but at least you know where you can find those, those uh, resources. So now if we go back in the main presentation, um, of course, uh, we would like you, if you want to do it, it's, it's kind of per a personal exercise. So the needs that you have, and where you can find the resources. So maybe you can bookmark those links, uh, which one you will consult first, which one will help you. And uh, that's it. So it's kind of something that you could do right away. So you, you, you will find it when you, uh, the, the presentation is finished. And next event, so next week, December 2nd, we will show you where you can get our activities that are already um, built. Of course, they are not all built for online teaching, but they can be adapted for hybrid. So if either in classroom or online, because a lot of them requires technology, so they can be easily adapted for online teaching. And um, that's it. And December 7, Martin will present a bit more formal way to uh, do fun, interactive and hybrid teaching. OK, so how to use that puzzle, how to use quizzes and so on. Um, a bit more about Genially. Did you know that uh, you can earn a badge on Campus Rissi? Maybe Nadia, you will you can uh, explain that. Uh, well, when you attend events like this, uh, s for some of them or most of them, you can earn a badge of participation that says that you were a participant in an event. In this case, I created it uh, for this rendezvous virtuel du récit because, you know, we're trying to be uh, available everywhere. All the service national are uh, doing that. So we're creating events. So if you wish to earn a badge for our event of uh, today's event, you need to follow these steps. Um, and uh, if you want to have uh, access to the badge per se, you need to be enrolled in Campus Récit. But 
Also, you need to be enrolled in rendezvous virtuel événement, and then you need to select our distance teaching resources events and complete the homework. It sounds difficult, but it's not. Uh, so maybe I'll just quickly go. I'll go in and show quick. Uh, do we have time? Oh, it's 501. Uh, if you wish to, uh, if you have trouble even with this information, if you have trouble doing it, Sandra, go to the next slide or maybe the, I don't know if it's the next slide. Uh, um, this one. So contact me because I, I do this on Campus Rissi. So contact me. I'll be very happy to help you and guide you in order for you to receive your badge. OK, but Sandra has something else to show you. Yeah, one last thing. Ho, ho, ho. I'm sure you saw this. So we decided uh, uh, because we know that you are very busy and that you're working hard and that we announced something uh, kind of uh, big, you know, that uh, on the 17th, 18th, 22nd, 23rd, you will be teaching online if you haven't done it. Maybe you feel like, oh my God, I need to do this. So we will prepare something for you <laughs> for each cycle. So primary, secondary level, and those resources will be available on December, for, December 14th on our website. So there will be uh, special activities that you can use that you will be able to use with your students online. So yeah, that's so even that's if you're used to Christmas teaching online. <laughs> Yeah, so, it's going uh, to be a, our Christmas present. So you, everybody deserves some uh, a little bit of giving after this uh, <laughs> not so ordinary year, shall we say? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, hopefully, we hope that you like the format. So uh, of course, it, it, we decided to do it that way instead of just presenting everything. So we wanted to to uh, answer your needs. Thank you. Tell us, yeah, tell us what you think uh, about this this format in the chat. Do you like this format? It's kind of uh, we we thought it would be interesting to address your questions and answer them because we have, have a lot of things. So thank you. Good. And if ever you have a question or.